Good everyone, welcome to this um, unique video. And today we're going to be doing something a bit more unique. This is going to be a tutorial on dive bombing. Now, obviously, this is coming off a discussion I had with a player the other day. Um, I think his name was Bake Ox, if I remember rightly. He has subscribed. Um, and the other day I was in my T26 premium grinding a market distinction for it to get a review and everything on it. And, well, he got a bit of bad luck. He mistimed his bomb drop and he missed my tank by about 5 meters. And if he'd have waited another 0.2 or 0.5 of a second, he'd have had me. And I said, well... I could work on something along these lines, so that is a possibility. Now, I'm going to be using Russia because I find Russia to be the easier nation to use bombs from. Totally not because the Russian bombs are overperforming, but that's a story for another day. I just find that um, these planes handle the best in most situations and they're easier to get the bomb drops off. Another nation you would want to try is the US. However, the US 100 pounders, such as on the P26P shooter, are pretty dang terrible. So I wouldn't advise them. In that regard, you'd want the SP23 because of its 500 and 250 payload. Or maybe the SBD Dauntless after you get rid of the 100 pounders. So I've assembled a couple of aircraft down here. Um, I am actually going to bring some rockets because we are going to do rockets as well in this regard. But I'm using the P3 for that. So I've got the 50, the 100, the 250 and the 500. I don't have the 1000 on board. The 5000 that the Russians use, you don't even have to hit your target to kill it. Let's be real. The 1000 isn't typically used on twin engined bombers. Unless it's a year, and even then, I don't advise running years in ground forces. So, let's jump into the I-15 into a test flight, because I am going to do this all in test flight, because it's a lot easier, and it saves a lot more time. Now, with an I-15, obviously you've got high controllability, but you've only got two bombs. I typically use these things as a last resort in my T26 premium lineup, but these small bombs can pack a punch if you really need to. If you want me to cover other nations as well, I can do. The US I think would be an interesting one to cover, but also the Japanese because they tend to use a lot of 60 kilogram bombs. But um. I just figured this would be a good idea, because obviously I've played the game now nearly well, just over four years now. And I've learned a lot. Obviously my dive bombing is not 100%, but let's just say if you feel my bombs you know I'm going to be back for the next run. So this is typically how I would set up for a dive bombing approach. I'd climb above the target and stick my nose down gently. You want to get to within the sweet spot right about now. And there you can see, direct here. Landed right on target. You want to put your throttle back to 0% and drop once you get to around 0.13 of a mile in my case. And obviously since we're out of bombs we'll kill this vehicle with the machine guns. If you've got high controllability like this I-15, it's a lot easier to do dive bombing runs. But how about we try something bigger? So, I did say we'd try something a bit bigger. And I chose the SB2M100. Nice little bomb this is. I do like it myself. Bit slow, bit weakly defensive armed, unless you're coming at the nose. But this thing was a lot of fun to fly back in the day. Nowadays it's not, but... This thing carries some... Pretty good payloads. I was going to put the 100s in this, but then I thought the 250s would make more sense. So I can bring a 500 in the other SP2M, so then we can just move on to the next plane, and I can show you how to dive bomb. 
Now, sadly, with the SV2M series, these have been nerfed drastically. These things used to fly like fat zeros back in the day. So, you do need to obviously be a bit more considerate. Obviously, we need to open the bomb base now. It's ready to go. Again, since it's a 250, we don't have to be as direct, but because we've got two of them, we can be a bit more balls deep. And as you can see, that's what I mean about the SB2M being a bit nerfed. We missed our run there, but even so, I don't recommend using the SB2M for ground forces. As you can see, the elevator authority is terrible. And we broke our propellers, but that's no big deal. 250s on the Russians are questionable at best. I don't recommend using the 250s on a Russian aircraft. If you get the option, bring the 500s. So now let's go to the 500 kilogram bombs. Okay, so we are in the SB2M 103. And, well, I put a 500 kilogram in this thing. You will be seeing this thing in the Talisman series because this is one of my Talisman aircraft. Obviously, I don't pay for my Talismans, I don't buy my Talismans. I simply just earn them. Trust me, I come a lot of first places in the team. Let's just say that. So. The 500 on Russian aircraft tends to be pretty dang good. But obviously we're in a nerfed aircraft, which, to be honest, I don't get why they nerfed the SP-2M. That was what made it fun. But now it flies like a overweight twin-engined heavy or medium bomber. Even though it's a light bomber. I forgot to mention about bomb fuses. I'll just quickly shut down the agents here just to make it easier to hear me. Um, bomb fuses typically, if you're using under 500 kilograms, around about one to one and a half seconds, maybe even half a second should cut it. But when you're using a big bomb like this, I tend to run two seconds. And, well, you don't even have to hit the target to blow it to smithereens with a Russian 500. Like I said, I've never been a fan of the Russian 250s. So I've never liked them. The second I can get them off my plane, I'm happy. I'm just going to shoot it. Or then shoot that ship. Because no one likes it anymore. But I just think, if you're going to use a CAS aircraft, you need something a bit more manoeuvrable. So why don't we go to something a bit more maneuverable? So now we're in the LA-7. And we have two 100 kilogram bombs. Obviously, I haven't gone over the 100s yet on the Russians. If you want me to cover the nuke on the PEA, well, that could be done. But it'd be really a waste of your time and mine, let's just say that. If you drop it in the same postcode, you should get a kill on your target. So the LA-7 has always been one of my more favourite aircraft, however I don't tend to use it for tank forces. But, you do get some nice bombs. I see a lot of people using these things in ground forces because of its capabilities, so to speak. It's an LA-7, it's got to dive well, it's got to climb well, it's got to turn well, and it can drop reasonably well as well. But obviously, same tactic, obviously, I do this more in fighters, obviously, we can't do it in the SP-2M, otherwise we'll lock up and crash. But I do this all the time in fighters, obviously, the best idea is to stay at the elevation range of a tank. But your drop, it will take you a couple of tries. But once you get used to dive bombing with 100, 200, etc. bombs, you'll get used to it eventually, it's just... It does take practice. You're not going to get bang on bomb drops, as you saw with the 250s. I suck with the Russian 250s, just because, well, they suck. They are not very good bombs to use, in my opinion. But, the 100s, the 50s, the 500s, they're all perfect. They really are all perfect. Oh my god, the Shavax. <laughs> Got our log at spin and turns out I'm running ground targets in this thing. 
I need to change that, but whatever. Um, so now we're going to combine rockets into this. So let's go find an aircraft. Well, obviously you've seen the PU-3. Let's go fetch some rockets. Now, typically with rockets, obviously we're on the PE-3, they will be tend to spread out quite far across the wings. As you can see on the PE-3, we do have them rather spread out. I tend to use the PE-3 for more air superiority with rockets, such as firing rockets at aircraft, such as bombers, sending a fuse and firing them at fighters, etc. That's my personal preference for the PE-3, however, you can still use it for ground forces. There are many different types of rockets with different types of velocities, but the Russian, well, the RBS-132s, obviously these are the RS, these are the air-to-air -air rocket versions, but they can still do ground strike. These things used to nuke pretty much anything back in the day. They sadly don't anymore. Rockets, even I don't use that much on tanks. If I've got RP3s, I will use them. But otherwise, I don't tend to rely upon them. So, once again, since we're in the P3, we can do this. Now, obviously, you can see on the cursor here, we do have different ranges. You typically want to aim a bit more than what you might think with the RS-132s. And as you saw there, that was a single hit and a single kill. We'll turn back around and hit that like the armored truck as well. But as you can tell, rockets require a bit more precision. They're not going to get you instant kills. The Tiny Tims will on the US aircraft. But, as you can see, I mean, we hit right next to Hans, and that was the end of that vehicle. But rockets will cause hull break if the rocket caliber is big enough. They tend to be, so. As long as it explodes on the target, you'll get a kill. Obviously, rocket cast requires a bit more precision. But, um, you just got to be a bit more aware, so to speak. Obviously, against ships, I'm not really certain how rockets will do. So, this is something unique, and it's a one-shot. Understandable. I mean, it's an air-to-air -air rocket hitting a small boat, but even so. So I hope that covers a reasonable way to dive bomb and things like that. Obviously, well, in fact, we're actually going to cut back to the hangar now. And we are going to go over some aircraft that I recommend across all nations. It will take a while, so if you don't want to watch that bit, you don't have to. You can leave right now. But, um... I'm going to cut back and we are going to take a look at some aircraft to use in tank forces of all nations. See you in a few. Okay, now we are back in my hangar and we are going to go over some aircraft that I recommend to use for tank forces. Now obviously there are a couple of stinkers in every tree which I will not recommend. But let's go over the ones that I personally would use. So we're going to start off with the F3F2. It's a reasonable turning plane. It can dive reasonably well. It's got two 100 pound bombs, which are quite hard to kill with. But once you get them on target, because of the th well, this thing's turn rate, you should be able to get them on target reasonably well. Then you've got the TBD Devastator. With six 100 pounders, you can use those to carpet bomb. And with two 500 pounders, these bombs will do some work. And not only that, if you really need to, you can go 12 100s and carpet bomb the living hell out of anything that exists. It's a lot of fun to fly the TBD, and also it's got a front-facing 50 caliber machine gun. The SB2U Vindicators are pretty good solid choices. They all feature the same payloads. They do have options for a single 1,000 pound bomb. They are very handy to have, and they are very nice planes to fly. In terms of your twin-engined medium bombers for tank R or tank RB, your B-18s are probably going to be your best bet with its 2,000-pound bomb. With a large explosive mass, anything that gets hit by this bomb is usually going to croak it. However, if you want to kill more targets instead of just dropping a single bomb and buggering off, 
the Catalinas will do you some good work. Now we move on to rank 2. Obviously, I'm not going to keep this long because we're going to be here all day at this rate. B34 is a pretty solid choice with three 500 pounders and four 250 pounders. And with decent defensive and offensive armament, this thing's a good versatile aircraft. The TBF Avenger is pretty okay, but do bear in mind this thing used to be horrible back in the day. It used to suffer a lot with control stiffening. The P-40 Warhawks are pretty good solid choices with a single 500 pounder and two 100 pounders. Pretty good aircraft, 650 cal machine guns, and it could defend itself reasonably well. In terms of rockets though, there's not many in the US tree. I'll tell you that much. But if you need rockets on an aircraft, the F-670 best bet. With two tiny Tims, anything that gets hit by these rockets is going to croak it. If you don't know what I mean by croak it, it basically means die. It's a bit of slang for you. The F-6F, however, well, in fact, I think the Bearcats can also carry these. Tiny Tim rockets require not just precision, but the fact that you don't want to get hit by your own rockets because these things will devastate your aircraft. You don't even have to hit your well, you don't even have to land a rocket within a country mile of your aircraft to do some damage. It's why I recommend long range firing with a tiny tim. But obviously the F6F can also carry six H fars and two one thousand pound bombs. They do drop at the same time though. Now we're moving on to rank three, I forgot to mention the A20G would also be a good choice. Well rank three is an easy bet. You've got the P forty seven, you've got the Corsair. Or the F4U1D, you've got the F6F5N. The P63s, or the later P63s, can do some good work with three 500 pounders. The PBJ1H is a decent choice, and the Helldive is a decent choice. Now we're moving on to rank 4. I've seen a lot of people use the Bearcat. Obviously, I don't have the Bearcats, or either of the Bearcats spaded, so don't ask me about that. You do get another P47 in the form of the N model. The P-38s can finally carry bombs, so that's a good thing. The Mustangs can as well. Obviously, the F-82 can carry two 2,000 pound bombs, which can be quite devastating. Then jets. Well, I don't give a shit about jets, so don't ask me about those. Obviously, the clubbers in the German tree feature a couple of aircraft. We have the HS-123 and we have the Doe. The Doe is more perfect for carpet bombing. The HS-123 is more for dive bombing and precision. Then you've obviously got the two Doe 17s. These are pretty good aircraft. They have the Z2 is a very good aircraft because it's 20, 50 kilogram bombs. You can easily nuke anything with those. Stukas and the Heinkel 111s are pretty handy at aircraft to have. The Ju 88s are pretty good as well. The Ju 87 R2 is a very good choice as well. Germany tends to rely a lot on dive bombers. But at the same time, you've got BF 110s, which Dark Angel loves these things. Dark Angel's favourite payload is the 1000 and the 250. He loves these aircraft, and he's recently just unlocked the G, which is a fantastic plane. I mean, who would not want the choice of having up to four cannons or having two 500 kilogram bombs? Obviously, Condor, don't even bother with it. Gun casts in the German tree tends to be on the G2 Stuka and the Ducks, as well as the 50mm armed um, two ME410s. I don't tend to use those. The 109s across the board can pretty much carry bombs all the way down, except for the K4. I believe the G10 can as well. Yes, it can. However, the K4 is the only plane that cannot, or the 109 that cannot carry bombs. However, historically, it could. As you move down, though, you notice that a lot of German cast planes start relying on 30mm MK103s. These are pretty effective cannons, but if you really need a plane for your cast at this sort of battle rating, your does are going to be good, and also the Doe 335B2. I've seen a lot of these lately. USSR have generally covered across the board. The SU2 would be a good choice. The SB2M used to be a good choice. The AR-2 is exactly like the SP-2M, so don't bother. Yak-4 is a decent choice, so is the Yak-2. IL-2s are pretty solid choices. For fighters, you don't tend to get a lot of bombs with these, but the I-185 is a good choice. The A-16s could be quite fun. 
And, well, P8. That's all I need to say. <laughs> TU2S two two would be a solid choice as well. And also the SU6. That includes the AM42 model. Okay, Britain. I do need to take a bit of a breather now because my throat's starting to die from all this. That's better. Bit of a cold drink just helped my throat a bit. Been blabbing a lot. So, um, in terms of Britain, they don't tend to have a lot of early casts. But the V156B1, which is basically a copy of the um, the Vindicators that you saw earlier, the US tree. Again, one thousand pounder, two five hundred, well, two two fifties and a five hundred. Solid planes. The Swordfish is a bit of a meme. It's it can carry bombs, but it's slow as balls. The Hamptons are pretty solid choices with four 1000s, and obviously the TB could also carry an extra two 500s. The Blenheim and the Beaufort are pretty good choices as well. The Sunderland I don't recommend because it's very questionable. The Hurricanes can carry decent rockets and, and stuff like that. The Typhoons can carry decent bombs. The 1B Lake can also carry um, rockets as well. Both fighters are pretty good choices, however they do suffer from engine fires. The Fireflies are pretty good solid choices, so is the Firebrand. But the Firebrand is pathetic if it gets into a turn fight. Mosquitoes are pretty good choices as well. The Brigand would be a good choice, and so the Hornet. And obviously Jets, I'm not bothered about. But for your fighters, your, your Sea Fury would be a better bet. I've recently just unlocked this thing, and I will probably do a first flight on it soon. Japan tends to struggle a bit in terms of chaos, because they don't tend to have a lot. The F1M2 is a perfect good starter, but it's only got two little bombs and they're not exactly easy to align with. The D3A1 Val's got a decent bomb in the center, but that's pretty much it. The Key 32 uses army bombs, which tend to work better. The Sally uses some actually quite big army bombs, which they are 500 kilograms, so they will pack a punch. The H6K and the H8K tend to use 800 kilogram bombs at most, which I will show. However, some people tend to get a bit confused about these 800 kilograms. You do not want to use the AP bombs. These are reserved for ships. You want to be using the Navy Type Number 18 Model 1. These are the more nuky bombs. Anything that gets hit by these bombs are dead. The Betty isn't really a good choice for Tank RB because of its vulnerability to catching fire. The B5N2 would be a solid choice. The D4Ys would be a solid choice. The Zeros can do some good work with their small bombs, but they are quite hard to line up. The Kai 100 with its two 250s are pretty good. But as you get down, you get the B7A2, and then from here on out, it's just 20 inch medium bombers. The Japanese tend to rely on such as the Ki 67. Sorry, or I think it's called the Toru, if I remember rightly. The A7M2 can carry rockets, but they're not the most effective, so can the M1K2 Shining Kai's. But as you go down, you you would normally rely on a R2Y2 for this sort of purpose, but the Ki 84s can carry some bombs if you need them. And we're nearly at the end, so don't worry. Um, the Italians tend to rely mostly on bombs as well. They have next to no gun cast. BA-65, perfect solid choice. However, your engine is very vulnerable to catching fire and being shut down by simple machine gun fire. I've killed a lot of BA-65s on my coax. Let's just say that. The S-81 could carry four or five hundred kilograms bombs. Perfectly solid choice. You've got a Stuka, so use it. BR-20 can carry two 800 kilogram bombs, very handy. The Area 2001 CB would be a perfect choice. SM-79 is not so much, but then you have a couple of attackers such as the Brady 88 the J87 D3. As you move down though, your cast does get a bit limited. P-108 Series 2 is really your only gun cast option, but it sucks. Z-1007 has very good payloads for a wide variety of needs. They are perfect planes for tank RB, except I see next to no one using them, which is a shame. The SM91 is a perfectly good solid choice, so is the SM92. 
The P108s I don't recommend though. But I do see a lot of people using the F84G. Oops. And we are finally on to France. Well, France is actually pretty dang good in its cast. With the fighters, not so much. But the bombers are actually pretty solid. Now the gun casts at lower tiers can be a bit more reliable, such as the 404 cannon on the D501. If you load up ground targets, you can penetrate most tanks from above, which I find very useful. However, it's all about the F2222 with its 4-500kg bombs. I didn't mean to press customization, but you can also have 52-50kg bombs. Very perfect for ground pounding and carpet bombing and scaring the living shit out of anyone. The 223 steps it up a notch with a load more bigger bombs, but obviously less bombs, but it's still a good solid choice. The Poto 633 is actually getting a buff next patch, from what I've seen in the patch notes. The two 100kg and the two 200kg bombs will be able to drop separate and not drop at the same time. Pretty good solid choice. Poto 630 and the 631 would be good solid choices for gun casts, and obviously the 631 could carry some small bombs, which do drop separately. The Martin 167 I don't recommend because it catches fire so easily. The MB-174 is good for hitting its target and getting out. A35B sucks, don't even bother with it. The Leos are good choices, the SP-2C is a good choice, so is the F6Fs. And then the P-63C5 and the F4U7 are pretty solid choices. With the F8F1B and the AD4, this includes the US AD4 being some good solid choices as well. So I hope that helps out with everything. Um, obviously... Some of you might have just left by then. But I hope you've learned some decent cast aircraft from me. Um, obviously, it's your personal preference. If you have any personal cast aircraft that you use yourself, feel free to drop it in the comments below because I'll be more than happy to listen and um, maybe try some of those aircraft myself. And here you can see what is going to be the next video. This is um, It's Philip's request for the F2222 in Tank Forces. And I've chosen Dark Angel's most favourite tank, the B1 Biz. And I bet you're wondering, why is the jerry cans all over it? That's a high deterrent ring. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video on um, a tutorial on bombing, rockets, and also, um, well, CAS aircraft recommendations. And I will catch you all on the next one.